Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Sao Sao Weekly Forum, a program amplifying the voices of South Sudanese on issues relevant to building peace and community. My name is Samuel Graham, your host for today's forum. Today, we are going to have a conversation with Ngor Majaka Nyef, the founder and CEO of Education Bridge, a nonprofit organization that is providing high quality education while promoting an atmosphere of uh, peace and understanding among South Sudanese youth. Mr. Ngor Majaka Nyef, welcome to the weekly forum. Thank you, Samuel. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, let's begin by you telling us a little bit about yourself and what exactly you do at uh, the Education Bridge. Awesome. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you for giving me this opportunity and, and thank you for the work that you do to amplify the voices of peace and, and community. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity for people that are doing work in South Sudan. Uh, please allow me to say a little bit about my story here, right? It may be a little bit long, but I think it will help our viewers understand uh, why I do the work I do. Um, so my name is Ngor Majak. Um, I believe I've been given a lot in my life, uh, especially in terms of education. And they say to whom much is given, much is expected, right? Um, I left my family and, and country in, in 2005 in search of quality education and found myself in Kakuma refugee camp. And that's where I received most of my primary education. Um, in 2008, I, I finished my primary eight and uh, almost came to the end of the road. By that time, uh, most of the schools were closing in Kakuma because of repatriation. Uh, and I didn't have the resources to be able to continue uh, in Kenyan schools. But out of nowhere uh, came a scholarship uh, from the US that was um, actually uh, organized by Samuel. So th uh, thank you, Samuel. Uh, and that, that scholarship opened new doors for me. I was one of six students that was given scholarship to study in a, a Kenyan school in Lodwa, right? Um, I went there, continued with my education. And in 2011, I had another opportunity to continue my education at the African Leadership Academy in South Africa. Right? Um, I was lucky again, and, and I, I felt privileged. Um, after completing my high school studies in, in South Africa, um, I was given a generous scholarship to study in the US. Uh, and a small difference was paid by a friend. Right? Uh, all these people and institutions supported me out of their own generosity. They, they never asked for anything in return. Um, but I knew that to whom much is given, much is expected. So uh, a few years ago, when I was completing my university studies at uh, the University of Notre Dame, I was thinking about ways to give back. Uh, and I settled on uh, returning back to South Sudan and, and serving a country that is very dear to my heart. And, uh, today, I, I serve as a founder and uh, CEO of Education Bridge, a nonprofit organization that uh, provide uh, that seeks to create flourishing South Sudanese communities through education and conflict yeah. transformation. By flourishing communities, we mean communities of peace, communities of prosperity. Thank you very, very much, uh, Ngor. This is a very inspiring uh, story. You've had really one of the most <clears throat> inspiring journeys and actually the essence of bringing you on board or on the South South Weekly Forum that others also may be inspired. So thank you. Um, so when did you establish uh, Education Bridge and what exactly does it do to empower youth and provide quality education while actually uh, promoting understanding and community? So I established Education Bridge in 2015 while I was still studying at the university. Uh, after completing my university studies, I, I returned back to South Sudan and uh, I've been working for the organization since then. Uh, education Bridge builds schools, provides scholarships, and recently started training primary school teachers, We Academy Board and Greenville Academy Juba. Uh, our aim is to build a network of quality secondary schools to prepare and equip young South Sudanese with the skills and attitude for harmonious living and servant leadership. We believe the youth are the hope of our country. 
we challenge our students to see themselves as problem solvers. I believe education should not just produce major seekers, but uh, collaborative problem solvers. So we challenge them to embrace the social responsibility to serve their communities right? uh, and to celebrate our diversity as a country. We, we um, challenge them to look beyond uh, most of the stereotypes that currently fuel uh, harmful practices in our community and, um, and, and stand up for, for a country that, that uh, our fathers and, and some of our older brothers have really fought for. Um, I believe this is, this is a way to building a brighter South Sudan. Uh, in addition to, to the work of building schools, we do recognize that many of our families are not able to afford a quality schools like Greenbelt, right? Um, violent conflict has left many of our families struggling to feed themselves. Uh, so to address this issue, Greenbelt provide a need-based scholarship to promising boys and girls, especially at our board campus. We provide about 45 scholarship every year, right? Nice. Um, we believe this is a way to be able to ensure that uh, all South Sudanese who uh, at least are willing and, and willing to work hard are able to access quality education and benefit from it. Um, of course, a lot has to be done and, and I would encourage everybody to think about supporting education in whatever ways they can. We have millions of young South Sudanese who are outside education and this really at our hope, we cannot, we cannot, uh, uh, we shouldn't have people outside education system. So let's do our best. Um, the third thing we are currently addressing is the issue of poor uh, quality in primary schools. A lot of our children go through primary school without acquiring um, necessary skills to excel in secondary school and beyond. Things like writing, communication. Um, and the main reason for this is lack of, of quality teachers because of poor pay. Uh, a lot of people have left the education field because it doesn't really pay you much and it doesn't allow you to be able to meet your, your, your needs. Uh, as we know, a lot of people in our community who are educated uh, have a lot of people de 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 uh, depending on them, right? Uh, so it becomes tough to work in a space where you are not able to meet your needs. So that has led to a situation where there are no teachers and therefore our schools are not, not performing. Education Bridge currently is uh, trying to address this by uh, training and placing our alumni, our secondary school alumni in partner primary school with the hope of being able to improve instruction in this school. This is something we started this year in board and, and we'll be able, we'll be expanding it to other part of South Sudan in the next few years. So those are a few things we, we, we are currently doing. We hope to be able to do more and we ask everybody to really try their best to contribute in small and big ways to our country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just pick up on the last part that you talked about. You mentioned about like three programs and the audience will actually uh, see that for themselves. But really, I like this critical aspect that you just mentioned about really building a solid foundation of education for young people, especially at the primary, secondary and uh, and then moving forward, <clears throat> it's actually one of the challenges that we face when I was at the University of Juba. You have students that come in, but really don't have a very good foundation, you know, starting from the primary all the way to the secondary school. And so when you're trying to give them the university education, when they lack this foundation, that's actually like um, basically like building a house on a sand. So giving that foundation is actually something critical. And I think you should keep doing that. So. Thank you very much. So can you highlight uh, some of the <clears throat> success stories uh, of Education Bridge since it was founded in 2015? Thank you. Uh, we have a number, but maybe I can most think that my local team in particular, right? Uh, our first school in Juba uh, have been doing well over the last two years. We have done a, a South Sudan national exams. We, we ranked fourth nationally uh, in 2020 and 2021. And, um, Do you know how many we, schools are in South Sudan? Uh, secondary schools, I think, that I did on that. Uh, uh, but we have a number of schools and number of centers also that that usually sit right. Okay. Um, so my team in particular is proud of that that we are able to compete because for us 
to be able to compete globally, we must be able to compete uh, very well locally, right? Um, but for me, really, what, what I'm most proud of are the opportunities we've been able to create for our students, right? Um, a lot of South Sudanese youth are very, uh, they are very promising, right? They have potential to do good stuff to compete. But the issue is we don't have opportunities. We, we, we are not exposed. And uh, Greenbelt has been able to provide ways, opportunities to expose our students and to challenge them, right? So we've been able to, to send a number of students to uh, you know, programs in the US for summer program, African Leadership Academy, right? Uh, we've nine of our students to South Africa, um, United Work College, right? Uh, and these are things I believe more schools do, right? These opportunities allow students to get exposed, allow them to compete globally. And uh, when they come back, at least uh, they know where the world is and, and they, they, they will serve their country uh, with, with a knowledge of, of what we, what we are uh, working against, right? This idea of competing with, with, with your neighbor who really doesn't aspire much, I think it's a problem, right? Um, of course, there's a big challenge. And when we took our student to the US, uh, they struggled with, with, with a few things. In, in 2019, before COVID, we took three of our students to the US for a summer program. Um, and uh, we noticed a few things. For example, we need to improve on things like use of technology. Most of the peers, when you're in high school, you know how to use a computer, you know how to do research, right? You know how to communicate and present, and these these were challenges for our school. Uh, but then the goal uh, is to make sure that we can we can improve our education to a level where our students can compete with those with those students. Uh, a student from Greenhouse should be able to compete with, with a student from South Africa, from the U.S., from China. Right? The, we should be able to provide the resources. Right? So, for example. Uh, we had do a computer lab, right? Since we returned, since we realized that that was a big challenge, we embark on improving our resources. And one of those was building a computer lab, right? And we're now trying our best to make sure that the next group of students we send at least don't have those challenges, right? Um, those those uh, US program were affected by COVID, but we'll be resuming them, right? And we hope that the next group of students we, we send will be more competitive. So those, those are a few things I am, I'm really proud of. Uh, mm -hmm. We can do more, right? Uh, but I think you start, you, you start with one step at a time. And, and those, those are a few things we've been able to do that, that, uh, that we feel proud of. Yeah, very well said, you know, one thing at a time. And speaking of the challenges that you just mentioned, one of them being lack of uh, in technology and especially being able to compete um, globally, especially when they come to the US and other advanced countries. So what are some of the other challenges that um, you are facing uh, on the ground? Because I'm sure you're doing amazing yeah. things, but that probably is not a walk in the park. So there are probably sure. a lot of other challenges that you are facing. So what are those and what can be done to address them? You're right, Samuel. There, there are a lot of challenges. There are a lot of challenges on the ground. Some of them are really uh, things we can improve. Other things really need more improvement at a you know state level at a federal level, right? Uh, but just to mention a few of them, our key challenge as a school, one of our key challenges over the first few years has been uh, hiring and retaining quality staff, right? Uh, in South Sudan, we we have to compete. So when we started in 2017, we, we committed to hiring only uh, trained university graduates. Budget, right as teachers right but but that 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 man we had to compete with a lot of NGOs that tend to pay many times what we pay right um, and, and it became really tough right um, sometimes you just get a university degree holder but then you also need to train them right because uh, teaching in itself is it, just it, people think it is something easy and any, anyone can teach but really you need there are uh, critical skills that you need to be able to deliver great instruction, right? Uh, so being able to, to tap the right people to teach has been one of the challenges. And, and I think a few, few things need to be done. One of the things we are doing right now is partnering with, uh, uh, you know, educational program to be able to bring teacher training uh, to our school. So for example, we have hired a teacher trainer who is currently based at our school in Bo, right? This is somebody that 
that support our teachers on daily basis, right? On how to plan their lessons, on how to deliver them, on how to assess, right? Um, I think beyond that, there's a need for us to be able to improve the payment for teachers, right? Uh, not just as Greenbelt, but as a country, right? Um, we, I believe Greenbelt is one of the uh, schools that pay really well, but we still need to, to do a lot to improve. And the challenge coming with, 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 with parents not willing to invest <clears throat> in education, right? So I, I think our parents need to understand that quality education is costly, right? And they should be willing to invest, right? You find parents are more willing to send their kids to schools that are substandard uh, because they charge less, right? Um, and then the issue of examination malpractice make it difficult for parents, I would say, to know uh, what a good school is and what a, what a, what a, what a scamming school is, right? Um, but I think parent, parents should, should understand that education is expensive and for their kids to, to, to have good educational outcome, they should be willing to invest a little bit more. And that will allow us to be able to pay, to pay teachers more, be able to retain good people in education space, right? The second th thing that I would say is um, most of the work of educating and, and supporting young people is left to schools, right? Parents, especially because most of our parents are illiterate, you know, many of our students are the first in their families to go to secondary school. So the parents feel like they, they cannot support them. They, these people know more than they know. And this, this really leaves a lot of a huge vacuum because education is supposed to be a collaboration between parents and the schools. So there are some intervention that we designed to really improve academic outcome, but because the parents, the community is not with us, it is really tough, right? Uh, this, this problem is also, worsened by the fact that there are many people in our community who are traumatized. Many young people were traumatized and it is really hard to control the support system, both at home and within the schools, right? And, and this makes it really tough for schools to be able to, to, to provide, you know, good uh, educational programs. Because if you come with, to school with, with issues right, mm -hmm. that are bothering you, those things need to be addressed. And right now, our community is just relying on sending somebody to jail, which doesn't work. Or sometimes they believe as a school, we should just beat sense into, into, into the children. But we can't do that. Corporal punishment doesn't work, right? Um, so there's, there's a need for parents to engage more with the schools. I think there's a need for community to invest in, in psychosocial support to be able to, to, to ensure that people are... Uh, um, the well-being is met, right? Because this is this is this is primary. This is this is something that we have to do before you can even get somebody. Right? Those are those are few of the challenges that that I think we need to be able to 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 address as a as a country, as a community, right? And and, and some that we we can address at school level. There are a lot more, but I think those 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 three are the main ones that we have been struggling with as a school. Wow, yeah, it seems you really have a lot uh, on your plate to be able to address. You know, starting from the teachers training, be able to retain them, and even this kind of collaboration between the communities and the families. And I think like you said it rightfully, you know, it's, it's not something that you can do alone. It's, it's a systematic, you need the systemic support uh, to be able to do that. But, you know, uh, let's hope for the best um, on that. And the issue you just addressed, particularly uh, the parents not being able to understand what their children are doing in the school because of illiteracy, it seems to be something that is facing South Sudanese throughout the world. It's not just in South Sudan, but it's also happening even in Kenya. Kids who are sent to school with parents or mothers who, have, who are not educated, don't even speak Swahili, if it's in East Africa and even in Australia, even in the US, that seems to be something that we are facing as a community. And I think we need to have <coughs> A bigger dialogue uh, as we go along on such kind of issues that are societal. So thank you very much for all you do. And um, <clears throat> you just mentioned earlier one of your flagship programs, uh, which is connecting students to competitive and enriching opportunities, not just locally, but also globally, continentally. So taking students to, <clears throat> to Africa Leadership Academy in South Africa, where they meet the students from across the continent and be able to get to work with them. And also for the 
outstanding ones being able to connect them to opportunities in the U.S. and other parts of the world. Can you highlight a little bit about uh, that? Sure. Um, so as a school, we believe that for, for young people, right, for young people to be able to transform their life and, and, and their communities, right, the schools have a responsibility to support them beyond high schools, right? We have a responsibility to support them while they are at Greenbelt, and we have to support them uh, beyond Greenbelt. And this means having alumni support system. This means connecting our students to universities, been connecting them to, you know, guiding them with career options um, at university level, right? So as Greenbelt, we have a number of partnerships that, that really are geared towards helping our alumni succeed beyond Greenbelt. Uh, one of our flagship program is, is the partnership with the African Leadership Academy, uh, which is a two-year program that is based in, in South Africa. It's a, it's a great Pan-African school um, that I attended and a number of uh, my staff also attended. We have been able to send a number of students to that to that school, and, and when they go there, they do really well, right? Um, so, for example, uh, a month ago, we, four of our students graduated from there, and, and they will be going on to, to great things, right? Two of them are going to top U.S. universities. One of them will be joining you at the uh, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, for example, on a Moet Kane scholarship, right? Um, so these this opportunities are great, and, and, and having this partnership allow us to help our students achieve more, right? Um, we also try our best to, to partner with, uh, with uh, universities for summer programs. So for example, we have a partnership with the University of Notre Dame in the US that allow us to send students for summer programs, right? This is something that was uh, interrupted by COVID, but will be resuming, right? Uh, so if you send two, uh, two or three students for for three weeks summer program, they come back exposed, right? They come back having actually understood where the wall is and what they need to do to exile, right? Um, um, there are a few other things that we challenge them to do, right? And um, this uh, this year, for example, one of our students, Kuruma Kualake, uh, became the first South Sudanese to win um, RISE Global uh, program, right? RISE is uh, an international competitive program that support high school students, right? If you become a RISE uh, winner, they can support you by paying tuition at any university you go to. They will fund any projects, idea you have, right? They will give you career guidance. Um, these opportunities, right? Being able to tap into them and supporting our students, uh, assess them are a critical thing that we need that we need to do more. And we believe they are as important as teaching itself, right? Uh, because if you teach somebody, they go home and they don't, know where to go next, right? Uh, the work that uh, the goals isn't achieved, right? So I'm, I'm thankful to uh, Paul Kut, uh, Kun John Clay, who is really our, has been uh, the brain behind the kind of support we are providing uh, uh, to our student to be able to access some of these opportunities, right? Um, with time, we'll be able to, to do more and, and do and, and, and have more partnership. But as I mentioned earlier, some of this, this, uh, there's a huge need to raise the standards, right? Raise the standard at our schools, uh, make our students globally competitive, right? Um, uh, this idea of just going through school, so you have certificate, but you cannot communicate, you cannot uh, present your ideas, right? These this, this, this things doesn't help yeah. us, right? So this partnership, though we have them, yeah, our students need to be able to compete, right, globally. Our role really is just to, to open the doors. But if you cannot compete, we cannot force our partners to take you, right? Uh, uh, so we have to do a lot of works to be able to, to raise our standard. Right now we have entry exams at Greenbelt, for example, to, for us to admit you. And sometimes people feel like, you know, we are just being over strict. But the idea is we, we, we need to have a standard of, uh, you know, academics that allow us to support you so that you succeed, right? But if you are just walking through education, right? It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't help you. It doesn't help the community. Yeah, that's, that's great. I think you should continue to keep those standards and, you know, over time also, everybody will begin to also acquire. It's challenging right now because when you try to put those high standards, like you say, people will be discouraged, you know, but the smart ones, they will see that and they will focus on that and 
it will become a culture over time. So thank you very much. So <clears throat> some of the parents might actually be watching this and their students might be watching this program uh, that we're having <coughs> with you. So, um, and might want actually to learn about deeply about the program that you have at uh, uh, Greenbelt Academy in particular. Uh, so you have two branches, one in Bor and one in Juba. And that's like, those are really uh, a national programs that accept students from anywhere. So uh, <clears throat> what is your message? You've already talked a little bit, highlighting some of the challenges you're facing and disconnects you're having with parents. But really, what is your message to the parents and to students who might be exploring their interest in joining your program? Yeah, so as, as mentioned earlier, and as we have uh, also restated, we have two schools, right? Greenbelt Academy Boar and Greenbelt Academy Juba. Our branch in, in, in Boar opened in 2017. So we have senior one through senior four, right? Um, we only had to meet one in Boar, so our admission is currently closed, right? But you're welcome to enroll your students or, or go and inquire about admissions for next year, right? Our Juba branch opened this year, and currently we have senior one and senior two, right? And our admission for Juba campus is still open, right? So if you are in Juba, Shirkat, right? You can visit the school, get more information. Our school is located on the new uh, Nimili uh, Juba Highway, right? Uh, so you can visit the school, get more it's information. Strategic, well, yeah. right? um, I think uh, the most important thing for parents, yeah, the most important thing for parents to understand is uh, that as much as you may not have had uh, formal education, right? There's a lot of guidance you can provide to your students, right? So it's important that you, you assess the schools, right? You visit the schools and, and you help them with, uh, you know, admissions decision where, where they go, right? Uh, you can't just invest in something that you, you, you cannot monitor, right? So make it a point to visit the schools, talk to uh, teachers and, and they will they'll give you the information that you need to be able to support, right? For, for students, uh, I would encourage you to, to, to think about your, your future goals, right? Um, it may be fun to have a school that uh, is not too strict on attendance, a school that, you know, allow you to be away from a school for three days a week and all of that, right? But it's going to, it's going to bite you in, in a couple of years, right? Uh, Big bite. So it's important that is going, you have to think about some of these things and, and you have to make choices that, that, that will favor you in the long run, right? Um, and uh, I believe Greenbelt is one of the schools that really is there to serve you. Uh, if you want to get more information, you can visit NOR brand and be able to uh, get the information from um, the, the principal there or other teachers that you guys have, right? Um, so that's all I can say on, on, um, on the schools. Uh, in terms of who can be admitted, uh, we we see ourselves as a national as, as national school. As I mentioned before, we 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 challenge our students to celebrate the diversity of our country. We believe it is an asset, right? And it's something that we should all embrace, right? Um, so regardless of where you where, where you are from, right, you are welcome at Greenbelt. Right? If if you have challenges, you are you are welcome to share them, right? Um, I, I feel like there's a big issue of trust right now. <clears throat> There's a big issue of trust uh, in South Sudan, whereby if you if you see a job advertisement, you look for who who is responsible for that. If the name sound uh, you know foreign to you, right, you just you just uh, you, you throw it away, right. Um, uh, but but really, those that kind of attitude uh, will not will not help us as a country. So let's 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 try to be part of the. Uh, the, pro, the, the building process, Let, let's try to engage with, with, with other communities. Let's try to do our best to embrace our diversity, right? And one way you can do that is taking, taking the risk if you, think, if you think it is a risk to be able to enroll at a school that, that, uh, that, that might have people from a different community, right? And you may benefit a lot, it may benefit a lot from it, right? So I would, would challenge parents, right, to be able to, to enroll, right? And I would give back campus is a lot more diverse than in, than our board campus so i think that helps and that reduces that tension um, but i just wanted to throw that out there that i know parents are concerned about who is at the school who's in charge 
but really our goal is to serve South Sudanese, uh, not to serve, uh, you know, a, a section of the country. Thank you. <clears throat> and I, th I think you're already doing an amazing work to be able to reach out to a diverse groups of stakeholders, the parents and the students. You already have like a website, which is breachacademy.org, uh, I think, I believe. And um, do you have a pay Facebook page by any chance where you reach out? That's actually something which is a low cost opportunity that you could consider because the Facebook page right now is becoming like uh, the, uh, the global community. So people from different ethnic groups yeah. will find out about the different programs. And it's, <clears throat> it's actually a low cost to most organizations. So that's something that you could consider for your programs. Yeah. And so uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sure. Uh, Mor Majaka Nyef, um, for sharing with the South Sawa Network your audacious uh, mission uh, to empower young people uh, through quality education and to provide uh, and to actually promote peace and understanding among South Sudanese uh, youth. I wish you more success in the months and the years uh, to come. To our South Sawa audience, please stay tuned and engage with the South Sawa Network on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and our website, sawasawanetwork.org. Thank you very much, Mr. Majak. Uh, I wish you best of luck.